They're just, they're getting really strong, kind of tossing me around. Christina was a very active person, always on the go, either uh, through her work, um, friends, family, always there, you know, if somebody needs something, suddenly she couldn't do any of that. I can't do anything. I can't scratch an itch. I can't get a drink. I can't, I can't do anything. And so just the vulnerability of you know, constantly knowing that my life is in somebody else's hands and, you know, what's going to happen next. And I can't do anything for myself. I have to, you know, rely on these strangers, again, strangers, you know, constantly for help. And so I, I felt, you know, you almost feel like it's a, like a prison, and, but nobody can hear you. Sit me up. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I probably have to. Um, yeah, I just need to scooch over a little bit this way. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good. Yeah. And then I just need to like this. Push that one in, cause like really hard. Yeah. It's. Did it click? Whoa. It's because I'm not so. You know, the nights were the worst. You know, I mean, all it was just cry and cry and cry and. And I felt like all I could do was really beat myself up. You know, like, what did you do? You know, you just like threw your whole life away for one like second of a mistake, you know? And you do think about, you know, why me? Because, you know, I mean, how many other people do I know that have done dumb things or people that, in my, you know, in my opinion, you know, purposely do risky things, you know, for a living and nothing ever happens. What did I do to deserve this? And okay, fine, I made a mistake, but why do I have to pay such a high price? You know, everybody makes mistakes. Not everybody, you know, has to pay for it for the rest of their life. So that was hard, and it's, it's still hard because I'm still paying for that mistake. I just wanted to fix the strap on the bag, yeah. so it's not hanging out. It was, it was a real shock because, you know, we all grew up, my mom taught us all how to swim, all how to, you know, shallow dive and everything, so it was really a shock to find out my sister had suffered a swimming accident mm -hmm. of any kind. Ready? Oh, okay. Um, all right, just pull the, pull the pants down a little in the front and then, and then just try to just adjust a little bit more again back. Sometimes, it, like, it's not even, it's like a couple centimeters, but it feels better on my back. Um, no, I think I'm good. I just gotta, I want to tilt back. I'm too far down, and if I lean forward, I'm gonna fall. I will be able to get back up. Okay. Once, yeah, once mom gets this once on, we could do my table. I, you know, I, I didn't have the power to, to heal my spine. Nobody did, and so now I needed to make a decision. You know, either I try to make the best of the situation that I have, or I make the situation worse for myself by, you know, going even, you know, darker into despair. And you know, and I knew that that wasn't gonna solve my problem. People weren't going to let me give up, number one, you know. Um, I knew it would, just, it, would, it would just be a horrible, long, drawn-out type of thing. And in the long run, I would just end up making my already hard situation unbearable. Um, I mean, there's only certain things I had, you know, within my control anyway. And so what do I do? Decide not to, to eat? You know, I mean then what's going to happen? Well, then maybe, you know, they'll just stick a feeding tube in me anyway. So, you know, I just looked at it 
like this is my life now and I don't want to make it worse. Get up at nine o'clock. Well, like nine thirty. Uh, it's a little bit more like it. Because I also don't want to like sit in that chair longer than I really have to. If she needs something, I'll get it for her. If not, you know, I go about my day. Um, you know, I work, so a lot of times I come home and I'll fix dinner, or her sister fixes dinner, and we order out. We relied on her. She was the older sister. She was the one that was supposed to, you know, set all the standards for us. So it was our time to, you know, show her that, you know, we can be there for her too. From day one, um, they were there for me physically there, emotionally, you know, shoulder to cry on the whole thing. Um, and I know I wouldn't have made it without them, my friends. They were a big, big help. Um, not, you know, just coming to visit me, you know, talking to me, just trying to distract me, keep, keep my mind, you know, off of, you know, spiraling kind of out of control. And, and um, you know, I, I, I feel really blessed to have them. I've known Christina for about 25 or so years. I think her art does have a, a huge role in her recovery. Um, she pretty much started painting again right away and she's just been doing it nonstop. I think it's helped her a lot. She's really outgoing, she's really energetic, uh, really motivated. If she knows that she wants to do something, she'll find a way to do it. And I think that's really helped a lot too in her recovery that she knew that she wanted to get back into painting even if she couldn't teach again, she found a way to do it anyway. Painting definitely um, makes me feel happy. I mean, it's it's one of the few things that I can still do by myself. You know, by myself, that I have you know full control over. You know, and it's something that I've always loved. So, you know, that, that's one great thing about it, that, um, you know, it's just kind of a continuation of what I was, you know, my old life. I'm just doing it in a little bit of a different way. This flower has so many little petals. I'm making a sketch of it, but it's like, <laughs> I'm confusing myself. Um, 